Hey guys, this is TSM FTX of Rosa. I play the flex role for TSM Valorant team, and this is the ultimate guide to playing Sky. I'd like to give a big shout out to Logitech G for sponsoring this video. So if you play Sky for your team, your main role is going to be to support your duelist, sets them up for frag because you have a wolf for information, your birds give you information saying blinded, you can heal them, you can flash for them, you can do a lot of things for the team, but you can also like her strength is that if she's in a position to be able to play make, you can flash for yourself, stun people and take those fights yourself. So what I think makes Sky uh, stronger than the other agent is obviously her flash because her flash is a little bit broken right now. You can pop it right around the corner and it mostly get even like the top level players. But I think it also people like playing Sky because it has like a balance between both. Like I was saying, you can support your teammate and you can also have that playmaking ability. So it makes it a lot, a lot more fun to play and you know, everyone likes making plays. So. I think the struggle of a Sky player would be trying to support too much because you have so much for the team. You have two birds, you have wolf, you have healing, you have your ult, so you always try to do something and you can get off, you can get caught off guard by the enemy when you're trying to pull your abilities because you're always trying to do something. I think that'd be her weakness. The idea of team comp for Sky obviously depends on the map because uh, there's maps that like complement more agents than others but i think has a sky duo or like a trio it's really good to have a viper with her or an asher because you can combine a lot of her stuff with it so for example like if there's a viper wall and you pop flash through the wall it's very op it's like they don't see it coming they don't know which part of the wall is getting flashed from and asher let's say you have a camera set up where you're going to flash around the corner while off the flash you can also add a, a stun or a tornado by the asher so they can't get away I think the nerfs that Sky just recently got uh, aren't gonna like make it a make or break for Sky. Like no one's gonna stop playing Sky because it used to be like that. Like the gun pull after you flash used to be a lot slower, and people still played Sky. The Seekers made seven now is not as bad as people think. There's a lot more ults that are eight orbs instead of seven. And as a Sky player, when you do use that ult, you most likely will get one or two kills. So you always end up getting the ult so fast so i don't think it's that bad of a nerf i think people will still play it and it's it's a little bit underrated so has a sky main obviously i prefer having a frenzy on an eco because you're gonna end up running and gunning when you flash your team uh, or like not your teammates when you flash the enemies and on the gun rounds it really depends on what your plan is if you're gonna take that long range fight obviously I, I i like to buy the vandal because it's one shot headshot from any range and if i know i'm gonna end up spraying down two people or flashing a close range angle then i'm gonna go with the phantom and there's a lot of maps where i will still go with the phantom even though it's long range because i plan on spamming a smoke or spamming a viper wall like i said that complements sky so you don't want the tracers to be shown so i would go for the phantom on the topic of goodbyes, something I really appreciate in my Logitech G Pro Wireless because, like I said earlier, I'm I'm doing a lot of place flicking around, dodging flashes, flashing the enemy, and when I flick around my mousepad, the fact it's wireless, then the cable never annoys me. It's really reliable, and it honestly never failed me in a year of playing Valorant, so I'm just gonna stick to it. I think the healing with Sky is very important because there's a lot of chip damage in Valorant. There's always going to be a teammate that will take chip damage and honestly Sky heal is the most underrated one because it can heal many people at the same time unlike the Sage heal which has a lot of cooldown it can only heal one person. The way it should be used is you should just be aware of what's happening on the map looking at your teammates fight and seeing their health bar at all times. But I think your teammates should still be asking for it because communication is key and I see a lot of people doing this mistake in lower elo which they take chip damage and they just go on to play the round and don't ask for the heal. So they just keep on playing the round and lose it while Sky could have healed two and three of them and they would have had a way better chance in winning this round. The one thing I would say that I do with the wolf that I don't see other Sky mains do is I try to use it the most efficient way so for example i see people like using their sky wolf when they already know who's in a main like let's say ascent for example they heard the cypher throw a cage they heard this guy throw a molly and they still will wolf to get information but they kind of already gave it to you so you're kind of just wasting it one of the things i i think i do better than other sky is i take the information the enemy's giving me and i don't waste my wolf for no reason Probably 80 to 90% I will go with my wolf, I will sacrifice some armor, go half, sacrifice a flash, sacrifice the heal. 
But it really depends if I'm on attack side and my IGL causes to rush B, then I'm not going to get the wolf because you don't want to be wolfing B while you're rushing B. You want to kind of have your gun out and follow your teammates, trade out, maybe get a second flash, maybe get heal in case they take chip damage. But it depends if I'm on attack side and my IGL calls to rush B, then I'm not going to waste my money on a wolf because you don't want to be wolfing B on a B rush. You kind of want to have your gun out, trade out your teammates and take the space. So the burst that Sky has that people call flashes, there's multiple ways to use it to maximum efficiency. Obviously, I think the best way is to pop it pixel perfect around the corner because it's going to be super hard for the enemies to dodge it. And even players at the top level, the fastest one, aren't able to do it or aren't able to shoot it because it's super fast and hard to shoot. And honestly, I think it's the most broken flash in the game for sure right now. So I usually start by making a play with my teammate at Cypher for example, put a camera on A main, I'll be around the corner and at the start of the game I will pop the flashes to see if they can dodge it or not and if they can't I'm just going to keep getting the kills and keep doing it. But if I see that they're not blind and the enemy is really fast then I'm going to start faking them and using other methods, stuff like faking the flash, peeking with it and seeing if I can get the kill. And the late pop that I was talking about earlier I, that I don't see a lot of people do is you throw the flash, make it look like a fake flash, like you're going for a peek but then you end up just popping it late because on their screen it's going to look like oh he's fake flashing they turn away from it and then turn right back into your crosshair and then you late pop and peek and get the kills the other thing i don't see a lot of sky do is when they're going to go for that fake flash they're going to throw it and they're going to be so close to the angle so when they end up peeking their gun is not fully out and the enemies have time to turn back and kill them what i will do with sky is i will go further from the angle so when i throw my flash and end up peeking my gun will be fully out and they won't have time to pull their gun and turn and kill me there's multiple lineups for flashes that people don't do i'll see a lot of people flashing for teammates or doing support flashes but they'll just be curving it around the whole map doing this and that but you're kind of like wasting your time so what i will do is i'll find a lineup to flash for my teammate like this and i'll already start rotating so you can find one across the map, you can find your own, and for the support flashes, I see a lot of people throwing them from so far away, like Ali to A main. And when you throw them from so far, you have to understand that not only they can hear it, but they can also see it from the angle they're holding. So usually what they'll do is they'll be prepared for it, dodge it, and get the kill and dash away. You're never going to get the kills when you flash from that far. If you're trying to support flash for your teammate, you should always try to flash behind them to be more efficient so let's say i'm going out a main i'm going to be flashing to the left side because when they're going to be entering they're going to have their back turns to it and it's going to be right in front of the enemies i do think it's very easy to flash your teammates when sky flashing because uh when you sky flash you kind of want to pop it right across the corner like i said pixel perfect the fastest way to get the more uh, efficiency out of it because it's harder to dodge but that also like results to your teammates looking at it because it pops in front of them as well. So uh, a trick I like to do or I like to say to my teammates uh, when I flash with Sky is always be to the, the wall side. So let's say I'm in B main right here and I'm going to pop flash this corner. I always tell them not to be to my right because if you're to my right then it's gonna you're most likely to get flashed by it. But if you're to my left the flashes are going to be right around the corner and almost never get you. Most guys just run around and kind of flash the corners. So if you have one in your team, try to go let her do her work and follow and trade her. And honestly, I think that's the best trick I can give you to not get flashed by them. Uh, I think the range of the bird is honestly not, not a big factor because it's it's honestly it's pretty big. You can flash from top mid to middle. You can flash from almost across the map, not all of it. But I think the range is perfectly fine right now. If it was all, almost too much, I could get information from A to B or B to A, and I think it would be a little bit too overpowered. So a big trick I can give to control the bird better is I when I when I throw my birds, where, whatever angle it is, so I will throw it at headshot level or chest level, and as soon as the level is right, I will only be staring at my radar to pop it right around the corner pixel perfect. And the other trick I can give is have lineups, like I said earlier. There's a lot of spots where obviously you're pre-flashing A main at the start of the round, you're pre-flashing B main, you're pre-flashing mid, stuff like that, that you can just get lineups. Like, and then all you have to do is stare at your radar and pop it at the right timing and it's all reaction time based. One thing I do with the birds to combo them with other abilities that I didn't talk about earlier when I was talking about flash uh, tips is I like to, first of all, double the flashes. So what I do is I flash, I wait a little bit, let them spam and then flash again. So they have no more bullets on the second flash and they're still even more blind because they don't have time to turn. They're almost like half blind and they get reflashed. So they have no time to turn and no bullets to shoot you, kill you full blind. And then one thing I do also is if I get info with the wolf and I know that I stunned someone somewhere, 
then I will add a flash just to make it safer because obviously even if he's stunned he can still get the kill so I'll combo the wolf and the flash and you can troll like me in ranked and do the ultimate combo where you flash stun him flash again and then completely disrespect him and kill him so the best spots I'd say to flash is obviously small corridors where you know the enemies are all going to be like walking up in that area so let's say you take ascent for example a main is a good one b main is a good one and what you want to do is obviously have the big trick i can give you is have a teammate get the contact or a camera or a kill to it and you just flash off of it and the other one that is really good to flash to learn how to flash well is the entry flash i call is let's say you're executing on a bomb site know where to curve your bird and where to pop it so it doesn't get your teammate and it gets most of the bomb site so if you're on ascent a and you're going out a main the one on the right right here is perfect because it's going to get most of the bomb site and your teammates do not have to worry about it and they can just focus on entering the bomb site and there's a lot of spots in different bomb site, but the big check I can give you guys is think about what's not gonna get your teammates while they're running in, but at the same time will get most of the bomb sites while your teammates are clearing angles. So for Sky Ult, I'd say most likely I will farm or I, I really like farming orbs for this ult because I think it's OP. Uh, because a lot of the thing in Valorant is kind of gimmicky, where like you know people buy judge, go in corners, do this, do that, and that's how you lose rounds. And the ult kind of exposes all the setups. So whenever I get the ult and farm orbs, I kind of try to use it as soon as possible because the thing with this ult is as soon as you deploy it, the orbs reset already. So let's say I ult A and three orbs go A main and I kill three people, then I'm already three off my next ult. So I think the faster you use it, the faster you're going to get it back. And it's really easy to get, in my opinion, if you, if you farm the orbs well. So usually when I get my ult, I'll tell my team, obviously, let's make a plan around my ult and almost use it that round or the next one. But I think if you hold on to it too long, you're kind of missing out on the next one because you would have got it back by the time you actually use it. Most of the time I will ult, I'll use it for a combat uh, ult because I think the enemies, when they get attacked by it, they kind of have to do something about it. So not using it would kind of be, uh, I, I would say stupid. It's kind of the most OP ability in the game. So like if I ult and I add a flash to it or I add a wolf to it, it almost feels like it's the freest kill. So it feels misleading and kind of wrong to not fight and get the kill. But there is some situation where it's going to be 2v2, 3v3, and I will kind of mid-round use my ult for information. So if I see two cabbages going towards A, obviously we're not going to go and combat it, and we're just going to end towards the B bomb site. But one thing people um, do bad with the ult is let's say they ult, they kind of peak a little too early before the ult give them the full information. Because people have to remember that there could always be an opera. So let's say you're on ascent and you're going to ult A main, there could be an opera heaven posted on you and a lot of people will peak A main too early after ulting and just end up getting up. So what I do is if I ult, I'll be staring at my radar until the cabbage goes blue, which means it's attacking someone and now he has to do something about it and I'll even add an extra flash to it. So I will use a flash almost 100% of the time with the ult because they have to shoot at the ult so it makes the flash even harder to dodge and in my opinion I think that's the best combo you can do. All you have to do is patiently bait it and add a flash to it. A lot of the things with Sky 2 that people don't understand like curving flashes and like knowing what's a good combo. A lot of the things will be preferenced. There's a lot of methods to use the flashes. There's a lot of different methods that I even didn't talk about in this guide that are more advanced. And I would say is just get the feel of it and practice it and see what works for you. A lot of people like using the wolf before and wolf after the flash. Like it's all preference at the end of the day and whatever you like better. And end up practicing and seeing what works for you and you just spam it and still with you. Once again, I'm TSM FTX Sabrosa, and I want to like to give a big thanks to everyone that watched this guide. Uh, make sure you follow all the links shown here. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the TSM channel, and leave a comment to what you want to see next.